Good evening and welcome to ATV News. I'm Charity Pepzani with your top stories this Tuesday. In Zimbabwe, the body of a 37-year-old mentally unstable woman has been found laying in a pool of blood along Bait Bridge, Masavingo Road. The woman, identified as Mrs. Tendai Zindonga, is believed to have been raped and killed by an unknown assailant, police said yesterday. Chief Superintendent Lawrence Chihengo said the incident occurred on Sunday in a bushy area. A motorist found Zindonga's body by the roadside and alerted police. According to the police reports, the body apparently had two stab wounds on the head and neck. A passport was recovered at the scene along with some telephone numbers which led police to her relatives. Chinghengo said the suspect is still at large, but a manhunt has been launched for the suspect. He appealed for anyone with information to come forward. Zimbabwe will next year begin a large-scale process of infant circumcision as part of a plan to fight against HIV. Dr. Sinoko Temba Kaba, the national coordinator of government's male circumcision program, said they've completed trials on newborn baby circumcision and were happy with the results. Officials say parents were allowed to refuse the procedure, which researchers say will reduce the chances of sexually transmitted transmissions of HIV by 60%. Dr. Nkawa said the circumcision is targeted at newborn males who will be exposed to the medical benefits of this procedure at a very young age. The number of infants, of infants circumcised at the moment is just 10% and officials hope that by 2015 they will have 1.2 million males circumcised. Zimbabwe has 40 centers approved by the health ministry where men can be circumcised for free of charge. But newborn circumcisions will be performed at all major hospitals and approved by clinics. A Zambian couple in Chief Chamoka Chimbombo's district has committed suicide after a domestic argument over 10,000 kwacha. The incident was confirmed by Central Police uh, Commissioner Stanwe Lungu and Chief Chamuka of the Lenja speaking people. The deceased couple, identified as Diamiano and Betty Dana, had a quarrel over 10,000 kwacha, which their husband had borrowed from his wife and never paid back. Chief Chamuka said after the quarrel, Betty Dana consumed poisonous pesticide in protest over nine payment of the money and died while the husband looked on. The husband decided to take his own life upon seeing his wife uh, had died and Mr. Dana also consumed the same poison and died. The chief confirmed the couple's bodies were buried in the same village yesterday. In the Mukushi district of Zambia, a 45-year-old farm worker died after a mob battered him for defiling a four-year-old girl on Saturday. The deceased, identified as Henry Katunga, was found defiling the girl in a parent's home. Passersby passers heard the girl screaming for help and mobilized and forced themselves into the house where they descended on Katunga while he was still in the act. Central Province Police Chief Stanwe Lungu explained that the girl was left in the custody of the man by his employers. Mr. Lungu said the farm worker took advantage of the absence of the girl's parents and led her into the house. The mob beat him to death, but no one has been arrested for the murder. Mr. Lungu warned members of the public against taking the law into their hands, adding that the man should have been handed over to the police. In other Zambian news, a protest by Zesco casual workers has intensified. The Zambian workers are calling for permanent jobs and hundreds are refusing to go back to work until their demands are met. Movi TV have more on this story. This place has been deserted after these workers abandoned their duties on Monday 19, 2012. 
The reason behind the continued work stoppage is based on a statement issued by the ZESCO Acting Managing Director, Christopher Mwemba. Project-related work and seasonal-related work. So when we have people who are working with us on such work, it is not possible at all times for us to guarantee that we will give them uh, permanent employment after that work is finished. The statement has not amused many of the workers. But others have wondered why they have been casual workers for a long time when the government recently stressed out that it will not encourage casualization. 18 years in this course. How can I give you a national grid? National grid, 220 kilos. Second by Mungu Kauma, I did that. But nowhere to, to assist me. Then how can I survive with my own kids? Questions may continue to rise as to why Zesco has been engulfed in many industrial unrest related to poor working conditions. And this time, management did not have any answer or solution for the protesters, referring all queries to the press statement that was issued on Monday, the first day of the protests. It seems for now nothing can be changed concerning the plight of these workers because management seem to have stood its ground on the matter. It's just that unfortunate some people perceive the fact that um, we do offer contracts up to a maximum of three, three months, after which we basically lay them off and if the need arises, we do re-employ them and offer them a new contract. So the maximum period, contract period is always three months. It is wondered why these workers are issued with identity cards for a period of one year when they are given a three months contract. Dinah Nyerenda, Mobi TV News, in Lusaka. In today's special feature, Liam is discussing the issue of litter on the streets of Zimbabwe. Litter. Shouldn't really be an issue, should it, on our streets? You finish what you're eating, you're done with the rubbish, and you put it in the bin. Then you get on with your day. Well, that's the theory anyway. But unfortunately, across a large part of Zimbabwe, this is not the case. It seems litter and waste disposal is an ever-increasing problem in Zimbabwe. This has been recently highlighted well in a special report in this weekend's edition of The Herald. The article suggests that the root of the problem is a lack of rubbish bins across the nation. In the article, Chipo Masara writes that Harare, which was once known as the Sunshine City, is now, as she calls it, a litter hub. She also cites a lack of national pride, the non-collection of refuse by local authorities, and what she says is a wrong mindset towards littering. These, she says, are many of the contributing factors to this crisis. Litter is one of those issues that really seems to get people talking, and so we asked our ATV Facebook friends for their views on the litter situation in Zimbabwe. As usual, you guys gave us a great response. Got a few examples of what you guys are saying about this issue. You've got Lloyd Nyahawai, he says, educating is the main solution to this problem. Batsarai Mazani says, effective bin collection by local authorities can really help. To turn litter areas into car parks will discourage dumping. Apparently this has been done in Glenview and it's really worked. And finally, Saidi Alidi keeps it nice and short and says, it should be a crime to throw litter. As always, guys, it's great to hear what you think. Well, Proudly Zimbabwean are a non-profit-making, non-governmental organisation, and they recently carried out a survey into this very matter. They concluded that a lack of sufficient bins was indeed one of the key factors in the creation of this litter crisis. I'm pleased to say that Fungai Chaposi, the founder of Proudly Zimbabwean, joins me now from Harare on the line. So Fungai, could you tell us more about the survey that you did and its findings? Yes, we recently did a survey in the CBD that was on the 17th and 18th of November. Uh, the CBD of Harare uh, stretches, when you take the kilometers and add them all up together, it stretches for about 33 kilometers. Uh, we went through all the streets taking a look at what's there in terms of infrastructure for litter. So we're talking of things like beans. And uh, we discovered that uh, only an area of 9 kilometers out of 33 kilometers is covered with beans that are of some use that can be used by the public. The rest of the kilometers are not actually covered, which means the outer exterior of the CBD has no litter infrastructure. So we cannot tell people to put litter in beans because there are no beans there. That's interesting stuff. Now, if bins are a big problem, as you say, what about the other factors that are affecting this litter crisis? 
Um, there are other factors, Liam, vis-à-vis um, -vis the, 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 the litter culture that's now prevailing in Zimbabwe. The, the, there are a number of factors. The, fact, the first factor being we have seen a rapid increase in disposable packaging from foodstuffs, yes. things that you throw away after you have eaten. We have seen a rapid increase from that period to now. And in that same period, we have seen a rapid decline also in terms of litter infrastructure in all communities. So it, 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 it's, it's a very bad situation, especially where you have a habit that can grow and, and, and become rooted like litter, which is what has happened uh, in our country today. And then there's also another reason that we, that we found out to this. Uh, as proudly Zimbabwean Foundation, we are pushing a culture of communities owning infrastructure that is in their communities uh, that is used by the public. So we're talking about things like toilets and the like. So if you're looking at the environment as well, it's something that the public eventually owns as well. So if the public does not have an ownership element in the environment that they are living in, let it be a city, community, whatever it is, they tend to damage the infrastructure that will be in that particular environment, which means people tend to care less as well about the city because they feel, oh, Harare, it's just a city I go, I wake there and I go home. So nobody really cares, they just litter. And if there's a problem of people's mindsets, how can you change that? Let's look at our primary school children. Let's look at our secondary school children and tertiary school children together. Let's look at communities, people that are now living in the communities that have left school. So we are talking of between 21 and say about 35. And let's talk of older people. The older people above 35, we cannot change their ways now. It's gone, you know, it's done. If you really want to change those people, it's about enforcement. We really need serious enforcement. Between the other age range, about 35 and below to 21, we need enforcement mixed with education. People need to understand what are the of keeping their litter well in their communities. Well, another person who has a strong view on this issue is Nigel Mugamu. Nigel, who we've spoke to many times on this show before, is the founder of 263 Chat, a Twitter-based forum that discusses important issues in Zimbabwe. For many, <coughs> litter is an important issue, so let's see what Nigel has to say on it. Hi Nigel, great to see you again. We've talked before and I know you're passionate about the litter problem. We've heard there that a lack of bins has been largely blamed, but what other factors do you think are involved? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. The, you know, there aren't um, as many bins as, as, as they are, um, you know, um, as, as they should be. Um, I think other factors include um, just society, you know. I, 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 it's okay. It, it, for, for some reason, it, it seems okay to just open your window as you're driving the car and just throw out whatever it is that you're throwing out, you know. It just seems okay. Um, it seems okay to... Uh, you know, there isn't a bin around, or there is a bin over there, you know, maybe 50 meters away, and then just think, you know what, I'm going to throw it right here. Um, I've spoken to people who personally think by littering they're creating employment. Really? Yeah, and that, that, that's sort of like, wh what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, who thinks like that? You know? And so it's um, very strange, very strange. And then the other problem as well is that even when the city council does provide the bins, um, you know, they, they then don't collect them as regularly as they're meant to. So what we'll find is, I mean, I've got a photo on my phone right now where I've actually stopped, just stopped driving, pulled over, got out the car, taken a photo of, of a bin that's, you know, um, clearly full um, and, uh, you know, there's rubbish on the floor right next to it. And then I've driven past that bin several times, you know, I drive past it several times a week, and it's the same situation. There's some suggestion in the article that this is a matter of a lack of national pride. How far would you agree with that? Yeah, I think there's, there's definitely an issue um, where, I mean, I've driven or walked past or, you know, I, I'm, I come into contact and, you know, I, you know I'm in certain neighbourhoods, whatever, and, it, and, it, and it, doesn't, it doesn't matter whether it's a... Uh, um, a high density area or, or, or not, you know, um, it's just got to a point where any open land, um, people will just dump stuff. And, and you're right, um, I've, I've, I've been thinking about that as well, you know, is it because we're not as proud of Zimbabwe as we used to be, or uh, do, do we not just care? I mean, to me, if you live, if I live right here and then 20 meters from where i live i'm dumping stuff 
surely that says something about the way I feel about my, my area and my home, doesn't it? And do you think this is going to become a real talking point on your 263 chat? Definitely, definitely, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, what I wanted to do is, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned um, you know, the people that you've spoken to because I need to sort of rope them into what they're doing and, you know, um, and, and their work because, you know, it, it, this is certainly one of those ones where we, and this is why 263 was created, so that we can solve this problem. You know, this, I think there's something that we as a, as a community can actually do before we start blaming city council and, and everybody else. I just think that there's got to be a shift in our, the way we think and the, you know, think the way we do things. So we've heard from a lot of guys there who really want this situation to improve. They think there's, there's education that needs to happen, communication, the council needs to get its act together and get more bins available. And hopefully this litter crisis can be resolved. After all, it's easy, isn't it? And finally, it's picture of the daytime. It was a hard choice with so many great photographs, but we decided that our favorite is this effort sent in by James Ant Fanacho Chitengu. Keep them coming in, guys. Thanks for watching ATV this evening. Join us again at the same time tomorrow and have a good evening.